Let's talk about health and wellness. What do the common household name Neil Tyson Degrassi and GMOs have in common? Well, believe it or not, the two are starring in a movie together. <laughs> so Neil Tyson Degrassi is actually going to be a part of a new film entitled Food Evolution, which this is actually has been mentioned um, for instance, by naturalnews.com, that it's a type of uh, pro GMO marketing piece for Monsanto. And if you don't know what a Monsanto is, um, you'll have to do a little research on it. Maybe we'll do a topic on it. But it's basically a um, weed deterrent um, for like uh, planting or, or crops and things like that to keep the bugs away and to keep them, um, to make them like Hercules, basically. Whatever, whatever you spray, the bugs will stay away. And the... Um, the plants become like Hercules. Look it up, Monsanto. But it's actually, this, this, this movie is actually being dressed up as an educational documentary. And um, a, lot of time, a lot of people, like I said, are a little uneasy about it. Um, for instance, you know, um, Neil De, um, you know, Mr. Degrassi is considered one of the more popular scientists, um, you know, in the cosmos. You know, he has... You know, some big think and other things like that. Um, however, some also look at him as though he is a chemical and biotech industry co-conspirator. Um, and what, why I'm saying that is because, again, this movie, um, Food Evolution, is actually him and some other known names and um, popular organizations will be supporting the movement, or not, I shouldn't say movement because it's already here, that, you know, GMO, uh, genetically modified food, that he is actually pro it. Um, there's a lot of videos out there uh, of clips to showing, you know, his opinion on how he thinks about them, you know, basically commenting of, you know, how would you like to eat the crab, crab apples back 100 years ago versus the big luscious apples that you eat today? Talking about those are genetically modified. Um, and there to our benefit of some sort because they're bigger. I mean, yeah, they taste great, but um, genetically modified food, in my opinion, is still up in the air for me. There's too many negatives versus the positives. Again, I mean, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna watch this movie, of course, because I want to be open minded. Um, but for a scientist or if a uh, Astronomists like Mr. DeRossi to make a claim that GMO foods are safe. You know, I want to see where his um, his calculations come up, right? Because I, you know, I've, and I've I've educated myself pretty much on those things, and to me, they just, you know, when you start messing with things um, genetically, sometimes they are not as perfect as nature created them to be, and nurturing your body as best as the land or the universe had intended to me. But anyways, that's my opinion. And a lot of people, others, but that's just me. I always think that you should be open and watch any type of movie that talks about the pros and cons of GMO, uh, in, uh, genetically modified foods, fruits, everything. You know, and just with everything in life, there are always two sides of every story. And just like this movie, you know, the, the non-Monsanto versus Monsanto, they want to tell their side of the story. Um, I think that it's going to be very impactful and uh, again, it's going to have some famous people in it and organizations to kind of help um, validate the credibility of um, the statements that they will be sharing in the, the documentary. So let's talk about some things to take away from, from that. Well, again, there's two sides to every story and both will want to share them most in the most relative way. And they're going to try to connect with you and bring all those people in and to, you know, make it relatable. Next point. How do you decide? I mean, how do you decide whether to go GMO or non-GMO? Honestly, you're going to have to make that decision for yourself, unless the government, whatever, or the whole world, you know, uh, or you know, puts a ban on GMOs or non-GMOs. You're going to have to make the decision for yourself. You know, we are creatures of not only habit but choice. We have a choice, and. You know, whatever feels good to you, you know, whatever it feels good to you inside and out, you, you know, because not just from what you see or a sensory point of view, because both sides, the non side and the, you know, the Monsanto side and the non Monsanto side, they know that they know that we are beings of 
choice and, and, and of sensory, uh, you know, feelings and emotions and what we see. And so, you know, there may be just, you know, some deceptive things on both sides to interfere with how we make our choice. That's why I'm saying you, you, you would have to just research on your own um, for yourself, because in reality, you, you should be trusting you more than anybody else. So another point is, is I wanted to talk about is the, the choice. We just mentioned that, you know, we have a choice to take information that we see and believe it or not. Now, do we stay there? Or do we constantly see it everywhere we live? This is GMO, it's bad. This is GMO, it's bad. This is GMO, it's bad. You know, or, you know, sna- whipping people who are eating, you know, non organic or GMO things. Like, do you rally up and, and make it right here, right here, your focus every day of how you live your life? Or do you just say, hey, I have a choice. I, this is not for me, and this is what I choose. Or, you know, hey, I'm okay with, you know, GMO foods. It's not making me sad. You know, you, you have to have a choice, and then you need to kind of just live there for a little bit. I mean, it doesn't mean that you don't need to be flexible to change. For instance, if there was some report that came out that said, oh, yeah, they are bad for you, or they're not bad for you, then you need to be able or sane enough <laughs> to see that as, as the truth and as a reality that maybe it wasn't as good. But you don't need to go back and harbor on what did I do or all this money, you know. You just need to be flexible and you need to move on. That's with all this stuff. Whether it's food or um, some type of new fad or diet or product. I mean, the world changes so much. One day it's good for you, one day it's bad. Another, you know, one day this vegetable is better, better than the other. You know, being flexible is, is good because then we won't break. Choose something, stick with it, and be open and flexible for change. That's my take.